Potato. Good afternoon, I'm Jackie Felgate. It's four o'clock in Melbourne. Here's what we're covering this Friday. Major doubts over a proposed quarantine camp in Melbourne's north. A green zone breach at Brisbane Airport with a COVID infectious traveller free to roam. The crisis in India worsens as two Aussie cricketers find a loophole to get home. Also developing news out of Israel, the death toll rising from a crowd crush at a religious festival. And a royal celebration for a Duke, Duchess and their young family. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Philgate. First at four, there's growing tension between the state and federal governments over Victoria's proposal to build a $200 million quarantine camp north of Melbourne. Here's Health Minister Greg Hunt speaking a short time ago. There are many elements which uh, are uh, somewhat of a surprise. It wasn't a Commonwealth proposal, even though it's on Commonwealth land. It's something that has been put to us, so uh, we'll just respond to that uh, uh, after we've had uh, a look, obviously community support, I imagine, would be a very important point for Victoria and uh, we'd be interested to know uh, what support there is. It's not something that uh, uh, we have proposed. So let's bring in Blake Johnson now. Good afternoon, Blake. Listening to that and other senior government people today, it seems unlikely that this Mickleham facility will ever be built. Well, it was always a big up. Ask Jackie, mm. wanting hundreds of millions of dollars when you're only contributing 15 million to do the design work. And today, the response from the federal government wasn't particularly warm. The defence minister chuckled when asked about it, and the local council bristled when asked about it. The mayor of Hume claiming they weren't briefed on the plan, despite the dedicated quarantine facility being earmarked for one of its suburbs in what is one of the fastest growing regions in Australia. However, doctors and epidemiologists insist we really should be taking quarantine out of hotels and into a proper facility because this pandemic has a while to go yet and we are likely to face another in our lifetimes. I've seen some uh, political smoke and mirrors over my time and I think this is uh, right at the top of the list. Hotels are working very well. They're able to be scaled up. It's disappointing to hear that because near, near enough should never be good enough. Obviously a facility does have to go somewhere. The question that government needs to answer is why here and how it will work in this location. Oh, this seems like such a mess, doesn't it? And we've also had a pretty serious COVID breach at Brisbane Airport today. So a COVID-positive traveller unwittingly breached what they call the green zone at Brisbane Airport and was allowed to walk around and shop for 90 minutes. As a result, 400 travellers, many who have since left the state or even the country, are being told to monitor for symptoms. Overseas, the situation in India is even more grave, but two of our cricketers have exposed a loophole. They were allowed to fly out of India to Doha, then Melbourne, where they're now in hotel quarantine. Despite the PM saying this week that would not be possible, the federal government says that loophole has now been closed and taking a direct route here from India is not allowed at least until May 15. Yeah, very interesting debate that one, isn't it? We'll hear more from you at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Blake. Four have been charged following a spate of violent burglaries in Melbourne's southeast. Police spotted an alleged stolen Mazda 3 in Scoresby just before 11. The air wing followed the vehicle, believed to have reached speeds of 170 kilometres an hour. Stop sticks were eventually deployed, which saw the car hit a pedestrian before ploughing into a tram stop on Victoria Street. They've been charged with a number of offences. As we go to air, former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins is in sit-down talks with the Prime Minister. This is a live shot of the Sydney building where the meeting is taking place. Earlier today, Ms Higgins met with opposition leader Anthony Albanese. It's two months since Ms Higgins first went public with allegations she was raped inside Parliament House. And political reporter Jennifer Bishwati is following the story this afternoon. Well, Brittany Higgins is hoping to use her story and public profile to push for change to Parliament's workplace culture. Ms Higgins alleges she was raped in Parliament House by a colleague in 2019. She's been critical of the handling of the matter and wants the federal government to establish an independent body to deal with staff complaints. She spoke to Seven News as she was leaving the meeting with the opposition leader this morning. It was a very constructive meeting and I was um, very grateful for their time. What exactly would you like changed? Um, I'll speak to that further this afternoon. Anthony Albanese has praised Miss Higgins, saying her requests were modest and reasonable. She has shown incredible courage to speak out uh, on behalf of, not just herself, 
but other women. As she's currently meeting with Prime Minister Scott Morrison, ACT Police has told Seven News that the investigation into the alleged rape is ongoing and there's no update at this time. Meanwhile, a former Coalition staffer who was sacked for performing a solo sex act on the desk of a female MP has made a report to police alleging he's the victim of revenge porn. And the man who distributed the photos to the media will be questioned by ACT Police. In developing news this afternoon, dozens of people have been killed in a stampede at a Jewish religious festival in Israel's north. The latest from officials on the ground has the death toll at 44. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has described the tragedy as a heavy disaster. Tens of thousands of people gathered for the all-night prayer and dance at a tomb which is an annual pilgrimage site. Back home now in a high school in Melbourne's west has been evacuated after a gas leak. About 20 students from Footscray's High Pilgrim, Ham Pilgrim Campus were assessed by paramedics just after 11. A ruptured gas main near the corner of Pilgrim and Albert Street is believed to have caused the leak. And a man has drowned in the Yarra River. The 47-year-old and his female companion were standing on a rowboat in Kew when it turned over around 7 last night. The woman managed to swim back, but the South Australian man went missing in the water. He was located by a passerby, but wasn't able to be saved. Two men will remain behind bars linked to a $300 million drug bust in the Netherlands. It's alleged they belong to a crime syndicate which plotted to import MDMA into Australia. Alex Lewis was in court. 19-year-old Anthony Squadrito and 46-year-old Tony Spitaleri did not apply for bail when they faced the Brisbane Magistrates Court this morning. The men were arrested in Sydney on Wednesday and extradited to Queensland. They allegedly belonged to a syndicate that tried to buy part of an 850 kilogram shipment of MDMA bound for Queensland. This syndicate attempted to buy 150 kilos of MDMA. That has a street value estimated between seven and nine million dollars. But the drugs never made it. They were seized by police in the Netherlands. Australia has quite a large demand for illicit drugs and that, you know, is something that organised crime takes advantage of in our country. Thirteen people have now been arrested as part of Operation Parazonium, including a 50-year-old Sydney woman. Our frontline police face and deal with the results of drug use and drug supply every day. Police say they've prevented enough ingredients to make 15 million ecstasy tablets from reaching our shores. This is a great result for us and I think it's also an important warning uh, to organised crime. Squadrito and Spitaleri are charged with attempting to possess border control drugs and dealing with more than $100,000 in the proceeds of crime. Both face maximum penalties of life in jail if convicted. Joe Biden has had a frosty reception as he takes his big spending plan for America's COVID recovery to the people. The US president was heckled by his own party at a rally. David Woodward has more from Washington, D.C. Yes, a major milestone, 100 days in office, but 24 hours after detailing his once-in-a-generation big spending vision for America, Today came the hard sell for Joe Biden, attending a rally in Georgia. But not the reception the president had hoped for. And attention now! And attention now! I vote for you! His spending pitch derailed friendly fire, demanding an end to America's detention system. I'm working on it, man. Give me another five days. There should be no private prisons, period. None, period. The blowtorch also being applied by Republicans, a narrowly split Congress demanding answers and consultation on the president's $7 trillion vision. Our president will not secure a lasting legacy through go-it-alone radicalism. With the focus largely domestic today, a major foreign milestone for America. US troops today began withdrawing from Afghanistan, the first 100 of 2,500 force personnel on the move out. Ending a nearly 20-year war and fulfilling a key Biden promise. A reluctance from older Aussies to get the COVID jab could be holding our vaccine rollout back. So, is it justified? We'll get the expert advice next. And 10 years on, Wills and Kate celebrate sharing their family with the world. Those very cute pictures when we come back. 
What's the first thing you want every day? You want to know what's happening. A very busy morning ahead. Be informed. Nat is live from the flood zone. Be inspired. You won! Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Start your day feeling good. Come and join us. Bye-bye. On 7. New from Nivea. Naturally good face care. Up to 99% naturally derived ingredients. Plus 1% for stability and safety. For hydrated and naturally radiant skin. 100% transparency for 100% trust. Now at Harvey Norman, get a great package deal on all your home appliances. Get this Westinghouse stainless steel bottom mount fridge, plus this easy-to-use Dishlex dishwasher, plus this Electrolux 9-kilo front load washer with steam and Electrolux 7-kilo sensor dryer, all for the package price of just $2,998, save $380. Many more great package deals, plus buy on 60 months interest-free and get a bonus gift card up to $500. Now at Harvey Norman. Neutralife helps build your inner defense. Gut relief supports gastrointestinal health and soothes irritation with gut-loving ingredients. So you can be fit for life. Neutralife. Sometimes, even the best tenants can cause damage to your investment property that standard building insurance may not cover. Terry Shear, Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist, provides the cover you need for your property and rental income. Have confidence that your investment property is in safe hands. As a first-time investor, Terry Shear provides the security I need. Call Terry Shear or go online. Ned's Same Race Multi is available every day on all three racing codes. Pump up your odds by selecting two to four runners to finish inside the top four. Use Ned's Same Race Multi on the Australasian Oaks this Saturday. Take it to the Ned's level. You remember I'm picking Bex up from school, right? The JCR's due Friday, so which font should we use? Are you going to video chat this weekend? Your dad and I would love to see the kids. He's in... So can we go out for an hour and resort? For over 100 years, we've been supporting Australians no matter the weather. So if your home becomes unlivable due to weather events like storm or fire, Allianz Home Building Insurance will help you with alternative accommodation for up to 12 months. Allianz. Call or search for a quote today. Go from this to this in quick and easy steps at home. Be your own colour specialist. The special formula protects my hair throughout the colouring process and covers up those pesky greys. And for easy touch-ups in between colours, try hair mascara or root retoucher. Schwarzkopf. Beat the winter chill for adventure wherever at BCF. Women's and men's range available now. From backpack and Under Armour to hiking shoes by Maryland Columbia. BCF, adventure wherever. BCF in fun. Hey! Older Australians are becoming increasingly reluctant to get their COVID jab. Part of the problem is the blood clotting cases linked, rightly or wrongly, to the AstraZeneca vaccine. We're joined now by Associate Professor Margie Danchen, who's tracking the COVID vaccine uptake for the state government. Thanks so much for your time. Can you talk us through what you're seeing, Margie? Hi, yes. So, as um, Amelia, the um, uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is now the recommended vaccine for the over 50 year olds. And uh, what we are seeing is that there has uh, been increased hesitancy amongst that age group in some of the more qualitative research that we've been doing over the last three weeks, where people are really expressing concerns about this syndrome, this um, clotting syndrome called TTS or um, thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome. And I think there's a bit of confusion about what the syndrome is. Um, so I think it's important that we're very clear that this is different from generalised clotting disorders um, and it is a very specific type of syndrome and it's very rare. So are you hearing people saying they're going to wait for the Pfizer? Um, can they actually do that or should they get an AstraZeneca if they're qualified to have one? 
Yeah, we are hearing that people are choosing to wait potentially. Um, and obviously in this age group in the over 50s, where we know that the risk of severe disease actually increases threefold with every decade of life. And older Australians are clearly, you know, at much higher risk of going to hospital, going to ICU or even dying. So we wouldn't encourage people to wait. We think they should come forward for the vaccine. But obviously they need to weigh the risks and the benefits, you know, with their um, healthcare provider and make the right decision for them. For the majority of people, though, the risk is quite low, isn't it? It's, it's only in rare cases that it poses a problem. That's right. The risk is incredibly low, and especially when we're talking about people over the age of 65, we're talking about a risk of about 0.4 mm. per 100 people. Um, you know, overall in Australia so far, we've only had six cases um, of this severe clotting syndrome and only one case in, pers in a person over the age of 50. So the risk is incredibly low, but that doesn't mean that we're not taking it seriously. Um, and, it, you know, it does have uh, people who go to hospital and need treatment for this syndrome. So it's been taken seriously, but it's incredibly low risk. What is the end goal of the vaccination program? Will we actually get to a point where we can treat COVID like the flu? I think the end goal of the vaccination program is really to protect as many Australians, adults as we can, from severe disease. That is definitely the primary goal of the program, of people needing to go to hospital uh, and have care in hospital. But obviously, secondary to that is high coverage in the community to prevent transmission um, so that the virus doesn't circulate freely. And we just don't know at the moment whether we're going to need boosters um, mm. on an annual basis or what variants may come into the community. I think all of that's still really to be determined. Associate Professor Margie Danchin, thank you so much for your thoughts this afternoon. Thanks very much for having me. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have shared a video of their photogenic young family to mark their 10th wedding anniversary. Sarah Greenolch has the story from London. Well, these intimate moments, a rare glimpse into the Cambridge's private time as a family, were captured by a videographer last autumn at Norfolk at their family home on the beach nearby, showing the kids aged seven, five and three, running around, being chased by mum and dad, playing with each other, even toasting some marshmallows by the fire. It was released today uh, by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on their social media channels, thanking everyone for the kind messages received on their 10th wedding anniversary with this little message saying we are enormously grateful for the 10 years of support we have received in our lives as a family. It was a decade ago today that the British public were given a public holiday so they could join in the celebrations as the future king and then Kate Middleton tied the knot at Westminster Abbey. The crowds in the British capital just couldn't get enough with more than a million people lining the streets of London. Some were even camping out the night before to make sure they had a great spot. And it seems that the Cambridge's these days are just as popular, if not more so, with various polls showing the only royal family member loved more is the Queen. A new YouGov poll also showing that around three quarters of the population believe Kate will make a great Queen consort when the time comes. SpaceX has successfully launched another of its reusable rockets, sending 60 internet satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9 booster blasted off from Cape Canaveral in Florida. SpaceX has deployed numerous satellites for the Starlink program, which aims to give users high-speed internet access worldwide. A group of international researchers who track monster sharks has declared a female great white has earned the status of transatlantic. They've been following Nukumi since last year and discovered she crossed the Atlantic Ocean. The predator, who's believed to be 50 years old and tipping the scales at more than one and a half tonnes, is just the second known shark to achieve the milestone. A wanted Victorian man has been arrested in Sydney's west. Details are next. Also, a car ploughs into an op shop at McLeod. And sport with Andrew McCormack, including a veteran hawk ready to return. Stay with us right here on 7. The greatest blunder in the judicial system in the history of Australia. Crime Investigation Australia, Sunday on 7. If you live for the thrill of the chase, if being outdoors makes your heart race, whether you're conquering the finish line or just rolling around in the sunshine, 
New OMO triple capsules have got your laundry covered. Throw one in hot or cold for a clean like no other. It dissolves to erase stains that put up a fight, leaving a fresh fragrance and whites that are bright. So just pop one in the drum. Laundry easily done. OMO triple capsules. Laundry made easy. Always keep away from children. Cookie people, cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. On now at Domain, save up to 50% off Australian-made mattresses and ensembles. That's up to 50% off big brands. Sealy, Sleepmaker, King Coil, Nature's Rest and Dunlop Pillow. Or get a Temper Queen mattress from $1,988. Plus, with selected Temper models, get a bonus Thermacool quilt and mattress protector pack. Or for just $1 more, add this Temper Ease Queen adjustable base. Get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card up to $500. Experience the Domain difference in-store now. Rediscover the magic of the greatest Disney stories and share them with your children in this amazing book collection. Snow White, Bambi, The Jungle Book, all your Disney favorites in my little library. Issue one, The Lion King, out now. Choices Flooring understands that we all have different needs for our homes. So, what's your lifestyle? Whether you're a busy family or need healthier solutions, love natural fibres and textures, or just want the ultimate in luxury, you'll find the right choice for your lifestyle at our What's Your Lifestyle sale. So go online and view all of our What's Your Lifestyle sale catalogues, packed full of savings, inspiration and chances to win. Hurry, the Choices Flooring What's Your Lifestyle sale ends soon. If you've been injured at work, it's important to know where you stand. Talk to Australia's number one injuries law firm. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your compensation so you can get on with your life again. Call us now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. GMHBA Health Insurance stands for a lot of things, such as getting many health benefits annually, like on optical, and helping get members' health back again with great value hospital cover. Join GMHBA today. What makes Nature's Way Adult Vita Gummies seriously good? Is it because they support daily health and well-being? Or they're a great alternative to swallowing tablets? Or simply the delicious flavour? Choose Nature's Way Adult Vita Gummies. They're seriously good. Fabulously clean. Fabulously fresh. Fab. Live from Melbourne, you're watching Seven's Afternoon News. It's a lovely 24 degrees outside right now. A delightful day to end the working week. Shoppers in Melbourne's north have had a shock around lunchtime today when a car ploughed into an op shop. It happened in McLeod just after midday when an elderly driver reversed into the front window. The clean-up is expected to take all afternoon. A wanted Victorian man has been nabbed in Sydney's West. Police pulled over a Holden Commodore arresting the 43-year-old driver from Mildura. It's alleged a number of guns were hidden under the bonnet of the car. A cat was also found and taken away by officers. The man is facing a range of charges relating to firearms and weapons offences. Sport now with Andrew McCormack. Macca, it is a blockbuster tonight at the MCG. Who's your tip? Yeah, oh, well, we'll get that in a second, Jack. Uh, the unbeaten Bulldogs take on the reigning Premiers and Tom Brown is live with more. Tom, the dogs will be wary of the Tigers without Dusty Martin. A massive build-up tonight. Good afternoon, Andrew. Of course, the Bulldogs, as you mentioned, undefeated. Richmond coming off that uncharacteristic defeat at the hand of the Demons and they'll be without Dustin Martin, who's in New Zealand, visiting his dad tonight. Of course, all the action live and free on 7 Live. All the build-up shortly at 6 o'clock. Meantime, this afternoon here at the Holden Centre at Collingwood, the Pies are taking on the Suns in the VFL. Some interesting names in the VFL side, including Kelly Brown for Collingwood as well. Imagine Tohill, Henry, Lynch, Rusco, McInnes and Sire. Just to name a few AFL listed players lining up in the VFL this afternoon. No Cox with soreness. Also no Nick Dacos is also nursing some soreness at the moment there. Young Gun who they'll recruit next year, Andrew. And Tom, a big name Hawk is set to return tomorrow against the Saints. Jack Gunson, what great timing for the Hawks who have found form in different parts of this season. Alistair Clarkson speaking this morning.
in light of the, the comments themselves, they, were, they, uh, they won a game of footy and all credit to them. Um, and we need to face that again on, uh, on Saturday night, more than likely, and, uh, and see how we go. But we've got to play tough, hard footy, and I'm sure they'll be doing the same. Yeah, they've been under a little bit of heat, so we'd expect the, the best of St Kilda to be coming out this week rather than the worst. What an important game for the Saints, Andrew. I'll be live, 7 News Live, shortly inside the MCG for all the build-up at 6 o'clock. Thanks very much, Tom Brown there. Essendon will unveil a sixth debutant for the season. This Sunday against Carlton, 19-year-old ruckman Nick Bryan is set to play his first game as the Young Bombers look to heap more pressure on the under-fire Blues. We've been pleased with some growth throughout the, the start of the season, which is great. and We're also a fair... A fair way off where you know I, I see this team getting to, so uh, that's exciting as well. Defender Aaron Francis remains in doubt with an ankle injury, while the Bombers are refusing to close the door on Michael Hurley returning at some point later in the year. Kane Richardson and Adam Zampa have arrived back in Australia after abandoning their Indian Premier League contracts, but Pat Cummins is staying on, and he took three for 24 for his Calcutta Knight Riders this morning. And Cummins gets three wickets. Why didn't he bowl earlier? That's a good question. But Privley Shaw had already smashed 82 from 41 deliveries. Marcus Stoinis sealed a seven-wicket win for Ricky Ponting's Delhi Capitals. Melbourne City's Jamie McLaren is now one goal shy of an incredible 100 goals in the A-League. City sealed a 3-1 win last night against Newcastle to record a sixth straight win at home, capped off by their star strike. McLaren, back scoring again, and that's 99 A-League goals for the number nine. City extended its league lead at the top of the A-League ladder to four points. And South East Melbourne Phoenix only just hanged on to fourth spot on the NBL ladder. They went cold last night against Brisbane, shooting just 28% in the first half. They were unable to recover, going down 94 to 82 with five rounds left in the NBL season. That's all for Sport Jack. I promised you a tip you for tonight. Tip? I think the Dogs uh, will get up. They've been incredible so far this year. The mm. Tigers, uh, they'll bring the pressure and try, try to no dusty. lock down uh, the, the Dogs' handball game, but no Dusty. I think the Tigers will go down, but it should be a cracking game. I think this whole round is one of those ones where I could end up tipping just about none. So. Yeah, it's a tough <laughs> one, the tip so far, but uh, live and free on seven. Uh, Pre-game starts, uh, I think it's seven o'clock on seven, mate. It so certainly is. Cracker. Great. We'll see you at six. Thanks, Macca. Five people have been arrested in connection with the abduction of Lady Gaga's dogs, including the woman who returned them. Investigators believe the dog nappers didn't know the French bulldogs belonged to the pop star and the motive was for their value. The dog walker, Ryan Fisher, was shot during the attack in Hollywood two months ago, describing the ordeal as a very close call with death. Just ahead, the latest on the unfolding tragedy in Israel. Also, why this Karim Downs business was targeted by vandals. And Clive Palmer loses a defamation battle. How much he'll have to pay for ripping off a hit song. We're back in just a couple of minutes. We've got good news. What is it? Over five amazing weeks. It's bigger than we thought. Seven Flicks is turning Friday night into Spidey Night. It's hard to believe what's happening. Five Fridays. Five marvellous Spider-Man movies. You do too much. You're not Superman, you know. Five action-packed weeks you won't want to miss. Spidey Friday. Tonight on Seven Flicks. Wipes, what a waste. Try Gunny Air Micellar Cleansing Water with new reusable eco pads. Micelles work like a magnet to cleanse and remove up to 100% of makeup with zero daily waste. New Micellar Reusable Eco Pads by Gunny Air Naturally. A long mobile gives you 80 gigabytes of data for $45 a month. Watch sitcoms, stream K pop, and email at the same time. And every month, your unused data rolls over. A long mobile, a plan for everything. At Terry White Chemmart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chemmart. Now that's real chemistry. I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. Your change. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half. 
in everyone. Spotlight, life's what you make it with 40% off all cushions, throws and chair pads. 30% off the entire range of bakeware. VIP say 40% off single 4423 heavy duty sewing machine. So plop it, bake it and sew it for less. Sail on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. We're celebrating 50 years of flame grilled flavour. The flame grilled smoky barbecue flavour you just can't get from pan frying. Flat fried. Flame grilled. Taste the difference. After 50 years, the burgers are still better at Hungry Jack's. Live from Melbourne, this is Seven's Afternoon News with Jacqueline Philgate. Good afternoon again. There's serious doubts over Victoria's proposed quarantine camp at Mickleham, with the federal government non-committal on the $200 million price tag. Health Minister Greg Hunt insists Australia's hotel quarantine system is working. You actually have to say this is a system uh, which has delivered world-leading outcomes. It's delivered world-leading protections. Uh, for Australians and the, I think can be no doubt or debate about that, 99.99% uh, protection. It was always the first ring of containment and around the world it's hard to find a system uh, which has offered better protection. Mr Hunt says work is underway for repatriation flights from India to begin as soon as possible after May 15 as the crisis in the nation worsens. An embarrassing COVID breach at Brisbane International Airport has been made worse by confirmation of a positive test. Two people from PNG managed to wander into the green zone designated for travellers heading to New Zealand. As Georgie Chumley reports, one of those passengers is infectious. It's the source of our latest COVID breach, Brisbane International Airport. Two passengers who'd arrived from PNG, a COVID hotspot, were directed into the International Terminal's green zone, a part of the airport designated for passengers heading to New Zealand. Mistakenly, they were advised to go from the red zone, where they flew in, into the green zone. And that was an error um, for which uh, the staff at the airport have apologised. Spending two hours among passengers of three NZ-bound flights. They visited Hudson Cafe, a retail outlet and bathroom before being found and sent back to the red zone. One has tested positive to COVID-19. It looks like they're at the end of their illness, which means they're even low risk. Two flights to Christchurch and one to Auckland have been impacted, with almost 400 passengers told to monitor their symptoms. Brisbane Airport says CCTV shows a handful of people came into contact with the red passengers, but they were wearing masks. The table where they were sitting at the cafe was cleaned once they left. An investigation is underway. The Brisbane Airport has apologised to the public. More now on our major developing story from overseas this afternoon. Dozens of people have been killed as a religious festival in Israel took a deadly turn. Tens of thousands had gathered in the country's north for an all-night prayer and dance when a mass crash occurred. For more, here's Tim Lester. Israel's National Emergency Service mounts a major disaster response. MDA received a report of a stampede where tens of people were critically injured. As an annual religious festival takes a deadly turn. MDA is providing response with hundreds of ambulances, thousands of volunteers. Early reports suggest a roof or stand collapsed, but the lethal event was the stampede that followed. Local reports say at least 38 people killed, crushed in the late night panic, more than 50 injured, some critical. All of a sudden we saw paramedics from Mada and whatever running by, uh, like mid CPR on, a, on kids. Scores of ambulances dispatched to Mount Merin in the country's north. Even Israel's military joined the rescue effort. I was there, he says, inside the festival with 60,000 to 70,000 people. No place to move. People started falling to the ground. A lot fell. 
Earlier, revellers had been celebrating Lag Boma, a Jewish festival near the tomb of a revered second century rabbi. Organisers had planned for 10,000, but had later suggested the crowd might be 10 times that. Prime Minister Netanyahu has described the tragedy as a terrible disaster. Tim Lester, Seven News. Clive Palmer has been ordered to pay one and a half million dollars after losing a copyright fight. The billionaire businessman was sued by Universal Music in 2019 for using its tune in his election ads. Michelle Jensen reports. A federal court judge has ordered Clive Palmer to take down the ads online, ruling in favour of an 80s metal band suing the former politician for a copyright infringement. Twisted Sisters' rock anthem, We're Not Gonna Take It, was used in Mr Palmer's 2019 election ads, with the lyrics changed to Aussie's Not Gonna Cop It. He had asked to use the popular jingle in the United Australia Party's campaign and was quoted $150,000. But the billionaire businessman didn't want to pay. The cost has ended up being 10 times the original quote, with the federal court ordering Mr Palmer to pay $1.5 million in damages. He testified at a trial claiming he didn't think copyright rules applied because the melody had been used in a Christmas carol. But the judge found he gave false evidence, concocting a story. And he knew he needed a licence, but decided to go ahead without one. She said Mr Palmer's conduct was high-handed and contemptuous. Lead singer and songwriter Dee Snider is celebrating, tweeting, we're not going to take copyright infringement anymore. And it's over, baby. We won big. But it may not be over just yet. Clive Palmer says he and his lawyers are reviewing the judgment and considering an appeal. Vandals have used rocks to break into a business in Melbourne's southeast. As Cameron Bow reports, it's believed to be a targeted attack. This was an act of intimidation. It's being investigated as a burglary. On March the 27th, three males in a silver hatch pulled up outside the factory of rock-solid civil construction. Without hesitation, they began collecting rocks from outside the business and then began to smash it up. The glass front door was shattered and then kicked in. The windscreen of a work truck was also smashed. Two of the men caused extensive damage to the office. Furniture was used to help destroy computers. The trio had their heads covered and were wearing gloves. They've gone and they've picked up the rocks from there and they've gone inside and smashed their way through. They seem to have an intent. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like they've just gone there and just done it off a whim. The trio managed to cover most of their features, although police suspect that at least one of them is Caucasian. It's believed that the business which specialises in concrete pouring was targeted, possibly as part of a revenge attack. In another sign, Melbourne's theatre industry is on the road to recovery. The Wedding Singer is about to open. The 80s musical comedy, based on the Adam Sandler movie, was due to premiere last June, but lockdown put those plans on hold. I am so excited to be back, and it's such an honour to be able to, you know, deliver such a fun show. It's a chance to get away from your daily grind again and just enjoy good theatre. Doors open at the Melbourne Athenaeum tomorrow night. Two-thirds of Victorian motorists admit to breaking road rules. Are you one of them and why the message isn't getting through? And new research finds a link between concussion and the mental health of our children. Stay with us this Friday afternoon. Nestled in the mighty Murray River. This is magnificent. A succulent feast to make taste buds quiver. It has me salivating. A zesty treat of juicy meat. Voila! <laughs> With salivating aromas and flavours from heaven. New Better Homes. Tonight at 7 on 7. New from Nivea. Naturally good face care. Up to 99% naturally derived ingredients. Plus 1% for stability and safety. For hydrated and naturally radiant skin. 100% transparency for 100% trust. There's a reason why Aussies buy Arnott's biscuits. And I'll tell you what, it's not just because our Scotch fingers are baked in Australia with real butter. Or because our Monte Carlos are made right here with real Aussie jam or even because our mint slices are made with real chocolate. Nah, 
We reckon people buy Arnott's biscuits because they're the tastiest darn Dickies money can buy. There is no substitute. Super Cheap Auto's catalogue sale is on now. Get a massive 40% off all Castrol Magnetic engine oils and 25% off all SCA Automotive and four-wheel drive batteries. Maybe we could find ways to call time out on our kids' busy routines before they get sick. But if they do, Children's Panadol can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. Together, let's rethink care. At Enes, we know that nothing feels better than getting that new appliance feeling, like this Bosch dishwasher made in Germany, only $9.99, or this huge 614-litre Fisher & Paykel fridge, only $24.99. Plus, get free delivery and removal on fridges, dishwashers, washers and dryers. We'll also install your dishwasher from only $99. And we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today, or shop online and get the ENS feeling for less. For the mum who adores you with all of her heart, there's one special day that sets her apart. So come that May Sunday, be sure that you do. Say everywhere and always, Mum, we love you. Michael Hill, where for love. Gear up for winter at Anaconda with Mountain Designs Thermals, now half price. And 40% off all puffer jackets by the North Face, Marmot, Heli Hansen, Columbia and more. Head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com. Anaconda! She knows this shoe was made for chewing, but she doesn't know what a firm stool means. Dogs don't always know what's good for them. Lucky you do. Optimum puppy formula with colostrum. They've travelled all seven continents. I worked in Antarctica. They've experienced it all. My goodness, four near-death experiences. Do these globetrotters have what it takes to beat a quizzing master? Correct. Joyce, correct. One of the closest finishes you'll ever see. Stop the clock. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. Lord Mayor Sally Cab is standing by her plan to transform the neglected North Bank along the Yarra River. The $300 million Green Line project would cover four kilometres of new paths, bridges and boardwalks between Birrarung Ma and the Balti Bridge. It's estimated to generate more than $1 billion in economic value to the city. Councillors will consider the proposal at a meeting on Tuesday night. A bad attitude behind the wheel could be leading to unnecessary carnage on our roads. An alarming two-thirds of Victorians admit to breaking road rules, according to the Australian Road Safety Foundation. The Foundation CEO, Russell White, joins us now. Russell, thank you for your time. Can you talk us through the concerning findings of your most recent study? You know, I think one of the big things that uh, are a massive concern for us is the fact that, uh, you know, people are breaking road rules, basic road rules, on a very regular basis, you know, on a, on a daily or a weekly basis. And most people admit to the ones that I guess uh, we know are the biggest risk is things like uh, speeding and uh, not, uh, not thinking about safety when you're crossing the road and, and those sorts of things which we think are really fundamental. But it's pretty clear that the, uh, the, uh, the level of uh, awareness around those things or the level of engagement with those things just simply isn't where we need it to be. 81% of female drivers admit to speeding compared to 75% of men. What's your reaction to that statistic? Well, I think, again, you know, road safety is uh, an issue that, that, that doesn't discriminate and, and bad behaviour, no matter who's doing it, is, is going to create issues down the, uh, down the track. So, and clearly when I think so many people are admitting to speeding, mm. you know, as we know, it can just have such tragic consequences and, uh, you know, the, uh, the outcomes of it can be so critical. So it's about us trying to get people to understand that it's, it's not just the risk of getting a fine or getting caught, it's actually the risk of having the crash. And, and in our view, that's the sort of uh, narrative change we've got to have if we're going to have real wholesale change in road safety. What were the most common reasons that people gave for flatting the laws? Well, I guess the big one is that they simply either didn't consider it as, uh, as an appropriate thing to them. They felt they could handle it or they felt they had the situation under control, especially with things like distraction. Uh, most people tend to think that they can probably multitask, where in actual fact, as human beings, we simply can't. So a lot of it comes down to the level of risk perception and I guess uh, the, their general views or the general culture about what safe behaviour is. Now, unfortunately, it's not till you have a crash that you realise just how quickly something uh, can go terribly wrong. 
And could this be responsible for hundreds of unnecessary deaths on our road, th roads, this distraction? Oh, look, look, absolutely. I think when we're looking at the, the fundamentals of improving road behaviour, the, the basics are always going to be the basics. They're never going to change. And I think part of the journey we've got to look at now is how do we get people to take more personal ownership for, for that, understand the risks that are there and, uh, and certainly understand that uh, their actions have consequences. They may not mean to do something, but uh, as we've seen, people can be involved in a, uh, a catastrophic road incident um, through no fault of their own. So it's about raising that awareness as well. It's a launch of Fatality Free Friday today too. So just finally, uh, what specifically do you want to get across today? Well, the big thing for us is, is that um, road safety is in our hands as individuals and, uh, you know, that we ask people to make the right choices around road safety and, uh, and try and do everything they can to be as safe as they possibly can. And, and just think about the, the domino effect that happens with road trauma. It's not just the people immediately involved, but it's also the community and the family and friends. And uh, the Foundation certainly works with people who are devastated by road trauma mm. and uh, as an organisation we do anything we could to try and reverse that. Yeah, absolutely, Russell. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Pleasure. Thank you. Jailed Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny has appeared in public for the first time since ending a hunger strike. The 44-year-old appeared gaunt during a courtroom appeal against a conviction for defamation. Mr Navalny denounced Russia's justice system during the proceedings and criticised President Vladimir Putin. Navalny was arrested in January shortly after returning from Germany where he received treatment for Novichok poisoning. China has successfully launched an unmanned module containing living quarters for a new space station. The module, named Harmony of the Heavens, was sent into orbit on board China's largest carrier rocket. The module is one of three main components of what will be China's first self-developed space station. It is due for completion by the end of 2022. A freak hailstorm has smashed towns in Oklahoma and Texas. Those are baseballs, guys. Those are baseballs. They're, those are baseballs. Locals filmed as the massive stones rained down. The storm passed quickly, but its impact was lasting with widespread destruction. Homes and businesses were torn apart and cars were also hammered with many written off. A new study has revealed more than one third of children who suffer from concussion on the sporting field end up with a mental illness. Separate research has also cast doubt on the AFL's controversial 12-day rule for players who suffer concussion. Nick McCallum has more. Two separate studies on concussion, one on children involved in sport, the other on amateur footballers, have alarm bells ringing at sporting codes right around Australia. 17-year-old Emma Henry is a netball sharpshooter. <laughs> but two concussions a year apart have left her with mental illness. I was very anxious, I didn't want to leave the house, I had concentration issues and I couldn't really do much, I just kind of had to stay in bed. Murdoch Children's Institute research reveals among junior sports people like Emma with concussion, 37% later suffered depression or post-traumatic stress, 20% behaviours such as aggression or attention difficulties. Whatever intervention we're doing, whatever assessment we're doing of kids with concussion, we can't ignore mental health. Unfortunately, it's not good news for the Tigers. And the AFL's new rule of 12 days off after a concussion has been brought into question by new Monash University research. These are scans of amateur footballers after concussions. The yellow marks reveal there's still brain damage after two weeks. It does suggest that 12 days may not be enough and we may need to go longer. The AFL says it will look at this study. It's always willing to change its protocols if necessary, but at this stage, it's sticking to the 12 day rule. You're watching 7 News. Mike Amor joins us next and we'll check your weekend weather shortly. There are battles that become tales of legend when challenges 
Aspire to become champions. Nothing this man can't do. To be the best. Bulldogs have won a classic. You have to be the best. Kings of the last decade, the Tigers. And the dogs are going for the kill. The champs are on the ropes. Will the Tigers prove they're still the ones to beat? Then, a clash of two titans. What about that? Swans, Cats, a weekend of footy for the ages. Starts tonight on 7. Go from this to this in quick and easy steps at home. Be your own colour specialist. The special formula protects my hair throughout the colouring process and covers up those pesky greys. And for easy touch-ups in between colours, try hair mascara or root retoucher. Schwarzkopf. What have you said, C? You don't know me. The new Eau de Parfum Intense. C. Giorgio Armani. Discover your signature scent. I am my store. Aldi's low prices just got lower with reductions on a huge range of products like cheese, bacon, pasta, eggs, this, that, those, that. No, not that. Aldi, good, different. Excited for the MS Dream Home Lottery Early Bird Prize? Get in quick, it closes Wednesday. This Tesla Model 3 or $105,000 in gold could be all yours. Get your tickets today. Step one has a new limited edition color. Get yourself some fireballs! 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 All right! <laughs> Step one, dot life! Fireballs! Hot, hot, hot! Feeling on top of your future starts with being on top of your super. At Sun Super, we bring you the tools and advice to take charge today to make your dreams possible tomorrow. Sun Super, what dreams are made of. I know you say only you can drive your car, but you can't expect me to buy my own car. And PD Insurance gave you such a good price. Maybe I should get a job. Go to pd.com.au to get your quote. G'day, Sue. Join me for a walk? I'd love to, but my legs are aching. I have the same problem. You need Revitev. New Revitev Medic is the circulation booster that gets my leg muscles pumping which could relieve aches and pains, swelling, and now cramps. Plus, it's drug-free. It's truth! Someone got Revita. And now discover new Medic Coach with personalised therapy for maximum leg pain relief. This Mother's Day, get your new Revitive Medic. A world of new talent is coming, and it could include you. It's your turn to blow the world away. Will you be the next champion of Australia's Got Talent? <laughs> Apply now at australiasgottalent.com.au This weather report is brought to you by Revitive Circulation Booster. Get Revitive today. It just might change your life. Sit back and relax. It's your Revitive time. Breaking news now, and former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins has just emerged from her meeting with the Prime Minister. Let's take a listen. We had a very robust discussion. Um, the Prime Minister acknowledged that the, the system had let me down um, and we were in agreement that, that there are needs to be reform. Um, it was a difficult conversation to have at a personal level. It was very hard to come here. Um, but we had a discussion about what needs to happen in terms of the MOPS Act, where there needs to be better safeguards for staffers, where there are power dynamic issues in terms of parliamentarians and individual staffers. We also made, um, we had a, a robust discussion about the need for an independent authority, about human resources. Um, I, I made the case um, in 2007 about uh, entitlements became a big issue and, and that was the start of IPR. Um, we brought that in, not we, but uh, the government of the day did, um, and drawing a parallel between those two things. So it was a difficult conversation, it was robust, but ultimately in the end I think uh, there was a consensus that reform needs to happen. That was Brittany Higgins speaking there and we'll have more with that interview at six o'clock. Mike Amor, those working on tonight's edition of 7 News at 6. And, Mike, there's been another terrifying home invasion. 
Jack, we speak to a woman held with a knife to her throat when thieves broke into the Glenroy house after her husband had gone to work. The couple only moved in four weeks ago. Now they're packing up because they don't feel safe, Jack. And, Mike, a surprise reason is being blamed for a worrying ambulance delay. Jack, a grandfather has been forced to lie on his floor for an hour and a half before help arrived. The union has a theory about why we're seeing more cases of ambulances being delayed. We'll explain that at six. Also, avoiding a new car insurance sting, how it could catch you out and the companies to avoid. And the best parenting advice from a <laughs> retiring maternal health nurse who's helped over 80,000 mm. babies. Those stories and the latest on the new COVID alert coming up at six. Plus, I know you'll have all the sport, Jack. I hear there might be a big game of footy coming up. Oh, I bet you are fully <laughs> across that. Like I said, though, no dusty, big problems. Uh, we'll see you at we'll six. <laughs> Let's take a quick look now at Melbourne's roads. Good afternoon, I'm Jess Miller in the Smart Line traffic chopper at the moment. Just taking a look at the city end of the Monash Freeway, we did have a breakdown. It was a motorbike just near the Church Street Bridge. The left-hand lane was closed. It has since cleared, so with speeds back up to the normal, it should start to ease off a little bit through here soon. Say hello to Smarter Home Loan Advice with Smart Line. Their mortgage brokers will help you choose the right loan or refinance options from over 30 lenders. Visit smartline.com.au. Have a great weekend. Let's take a look now at our weather and it's been a lovely day out there today. In the city we started on 9.5 degrees before reaching a top of 24 and outside now it's still a delightful 24 degrees. There are blue skies right across our suburbs this afternoon. Down at Torquay it's 22 degrees. Things are also warm in Mildura, 27 degrees there. That's because a high pressure system over the Tasman Sea is directing a warm northerly airstream across Victoria. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney could get a shower or two and Brisbane set for a thunderstorm. In Victoria, it's shaping up to be another stunning autumn day. So in the city tomorrow, we are heading for a mostly sunny top of 24 degrees. Enjoy that. And that is the latest from 7 News This Hour. Mark Amors here at 6 with comprehensive coverage of today's coronavirus developments. For now, though, from the team, have a great weekend. When you go...